Book 1, chapters 2 to 3 of 10 Books on Architecture. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Fredrik Karlsson. 10 Books on Architecture by Vitruvius. Translated by Morris Hickey Morgan. Chapter 2 The Fundamental Principles of Architecture. 1. Architecture depends on order, arrangement, symmetry, everythmy, propriety, and economy. 2. Order gives due measure to the members of a work considered separately, and symmetrical agreement to the proportions of the whole. It is an adjustment according to quantity. By this I mean the selection of modules from the members of the work itself and starting from these individual parts of members, constructing the whole work to correspond. Arrangement includes the putting of things in their proper places and the elegance of effect, which is due to adjustments appropriate to the character of the work. Its forms of expression are these. Ground plan, elevation and perspective. A ground plan is made by the proper successive use of compasses and rule, through which we get outlines for the plane surfaces of the buildings. An elevation is a picture of the front of a building, set upright and properly drawn in the proportions of the contemplated work. Perspective is the method of sketching a front with the sides withdrawing into the background the lines all meeting in the center of a circle. All three come of reflection and invention. Reflection is careful and laborious thought and watchful attention directed to the agreeable effect of one's plan. Invention, on the other hand, is the solving of intricate problems and the discovery of new principles by means of brilliancy and versatility. These are the departments belonging under arrangement. Everythmy is beauty and fitness in the adjustment of the members. This is found when the members of a work are of a height suited to their breadth, of a breadth suited to their length, and, in a word, when they all correspond symmetrically. 4. Symmetry is a proper agreement between the members of the work itself and relation between the different parts and the whole general scheme in accordance with a certain part selected as standard. Thus, in the human body there is a kind of symmetrical harmony between forearm, foot, palm, finger and other small parts, and so it is with perfect buildings. In the case of temple symmetry may be calculated from the thickness of a column, from a triglyph, or even from a module. In the ballista, from the whole or from what the Greeks call the peritretos. In a ship, from the space between the thole pins, and in other things, from various members. Propriety is that perfection of style which comes when a work is authoritatively constructed on approved principles. It arises from prescription, from usage, or from nature. From prescription, in the case of hyperethral edifices, open to the sky in honor of Jupiter, lightning, the heaven, the sun, or the moon. For these are gods whose semblances and manifestations we behold before our very eyes in the sky when it is cloudless and bright. The temples of Minerva, Mars, and Hercules will be Doric, since the virile strength of these gods makes daintiness entirely inappropriate to their houses. In temples to Venus, Flora, Proserpine, Spring Water, and the Nymphs, the Corinthian order will be found to have peculiar significance because these are delicate divinities and so its rather slender outlines, its flowers, leaves and ornamental volutes will lend propriety where it is due. The construction of temples of the Ionic order to Juno, Diana, 
Father Bacchus and the other gods of that kind will be in keeping with the middle position which they hold, for the building of such will be an appropriate combination of the severity of Doric and the delicacy of the Corinthian. 6. Propriety arises from usage when buildings having magnificent interiors are provided with elegant entrance courts to correspond. For there will be no propriety in the spectacle of an elegant interior approached by a low, mean entrance, or if dentils be carved in the cornice of the Doric entablature or triglyphs represented in the Ionic entablature of the cushion-shaped capitals of the columns, the effect will be spoilt by the transfer of the peculiarities of the one order of the building to the other, the usage in each class having been fixed long ago. 7. Finally, propriety will be due to natural causes if, for example, in the case of all sacred precincts, we select very healthy neighborhoods with suitable springs of water in the places where the fanes are to be built, particularly in the case of those to Aesculapius and to health, gods by whose healing powers great numbers of the sick are apparently cured. For when their diseased bodies are transformed from an unhealthy to a healthy spot and treated with waters from health-giving springs, they will the more speedily grow well. The result will be that the divinity will stand in higher esteem and find his dignity increased, all owing to the nature of his sight. There will also be natural propriety in using an eastern light for bedrooms and libraries, a western light in winter for baths and wintered apartments, and a northern light for picture galleries and other places in which a steady light is needed. For that quarter of the sky grows neither light nor dark with the course of the sun, but remains steady and unshifting all day long. Eight. Economy denotes the proper management of materials and of sight, as well as a thrifty balancing of cost and common sense in the construction of works. This will be observed if, in the first place, the architect does not demand things which cannot be found or made ready without great expense. For example, it is not everywhere that there is plenty of pit sand, rubble, fur, clear fur and marble, since they are produced in different places and to assemble them is difficult and costly. Where there is no pit sand, we must use the kinds washed up by rivers or by the sea. The lack of fur and clear fur may be evaded by using cypress, poplar, elm or pine, and other problems we must solve in similar ways. 9. A second stage in economy is reached when we have to plan the different kinds of dwellings suitable for ordinary householders, for great wealth, or for the high position of the statesman. A house in town obviously calls for one form of construction, that into which stream the products of country estates requires another. This will not be the same in the case of moneylenders and still different for the opulent and luxurious. For the powers under those deliberations, the commonwealth is guided to dwellings are to be provided according to their special needs. And, in a word, the proper form of economy must be observed in building houses for each and every class. Chapter 3 The Departments of Architecture 1. There are three departments of architecture, the art of building, the making of timepieces, and the construction of machinery. Building is, in its turn, divided into two parts, of which the first is the construction of fortified towns and of works for general use in public places, and the second is the putting up of structures for private individuals. There are three classes of public buildings, the first for defensive, the second for religious, and the third for utilitarian purposes. Under defense comes the planning of walls, towers, and gates, permanent devices for 
resistance against hostile attacks. Under religion, the erection of fanes and temples to the immortal gods. Under utility, the provision of meeting places for public use, such as harbors, markets, colonnades, baths, theaters, promenades, and all other similar arrangements in public places. 2. All these must be built with due reference to durability, convenience, and beauty. Durability will be assured when foundations are carried down to the solid ground and materials wisely and liberally selected. Convenience, when the arrangement of the apartments is faultless and presents no hindrance to use, and when each class of building is assigned to its suitable and appropriate exposure. And beauty, when the appearance of the work is pleasing and in good taste, and when its members are in due proportion according to correct principles of symmetry. End of Book 1, Chapter 3